when I got out of college, my first job was as a faux finisher. And that's like, uh, you know. Faux finisher. Right? Yeah, F-A-U-X. It's okay, but... French for false. Okay. And it's, it's, uh, it's like basically painting different textures on people's walls. Um, simulating different kinds of wood grain or, you know, making something look like it's made out of marble when it's really just made out of, like, drywall or something. Um, you know, uh, just, just, just learning to create all these different textures on different surfaces. Just one more book, please, uh, Okay. Okay. I like to be able to, to paint in really close, you know, if I'm standing. Let me turn the lights on. Here. I have one light that's like bluish color, you know, and, mm -hmm. and then I have this other light that's like much brighter and almost mm -hmm. a yellowish color. And I find that by mixing the two, I get like, I get the closest light to if you brought it outside and mm -hmm. looked at it. I used to always be really disappointed when I paint something inside and then I'd bring it outside and look at it in the bright sunlight and I'd see all the little mistakes and all the things that just, it just didn't look as good as it looked inside. So now if I use a mixture of all these different lights, I figure I've got all the different kind of lights covered and it'll look just like the, when it looks outside. November 15th, 2008. As readers, we have the privilege of enjoying the end result of the hard work of authors, illustrators, and a publishing team that includes editors and art directors. We hear about they'll rarely get to experience the creative process. It's hard to say no to the opportunity of getting paint on your clothes when someone like Jeff Mack offers to coach you through it. That's precisely what happened this afternoon. Jeff showed us how he sketches, mixes paint, and then paints illustration paper that's taped to his wall. That's right, he paints standing up. I'm Mark Blevis. On this edition of Just One More Book, Rock Stars of Reading Part 12, Painting with Jeff Mack. Usually I would start out with a background, and I'm going to use this old brush. It's like a really nasty kind of, see how, how old it's like? All this paint has gone down inside there, and it's, and it's hardened inside, and it makes the ends of the brush kind of like split apart. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to mix some paint. I like these old brushes the best because you get these weird random brush marks when you tap it against the page. So I'm mixing a little bit of all these different colors together. I just want to make a dark color, maybe like that. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to just paint some of that in the background, maybe around the side of the flamingo like that. I'm not going to be too careful about this. I think I was going to paint that flamingo with a sock on the end of his nose. I don't know why, but sometimes it's better off not asking too many questions and just painting the thing that's in your imagination. And then afterwards you find out the reason why you painted it. Or somebody else tells you why you painted it and you're like, yeah, that sounds like a good reason to me. <laughs> okay, so I'll paint that background in. And then I like to use different, if I do it before it dries, I can tap this brush right against the page and oh, yeah, you see how cool. yeah see how yeah. it makes that like it's almost like a furry texture yeah yeah and that's because of that brush is so old and it got all that paint stuck inside there and this isn't the only layer of paint that we'll put on here but it's good for starters you know any of this can change i use acrylic paint and it dries really fast, um, which is good because I don't have too long to do all these paintings for the book. So if I need to make changes, I can just wait for the paint to dry in a couple minutes and then I can paint over it if I need to and make whatever kind of changes I need to. So what I was saying is one of the reasons I like to paint standing up is because now I've got the background in and I know what it looks like when I'm this distance but then I can also step back here and I can take a look at it back here and see if it still looks any good to me. And I can say, ah, yeah, you know, I noticed that there's like this dark area coming through here and it's not quite as random as I want it to be. It makes too strong of a shape. So I can go back and I can change that 
and then I can come back again and step back and be like, yeah, that's, that's a little better. There's one spot here. And if I was sitting down, I don't think I'd remember to like stand up, look, but look away, you know. And then I have this wildlife fact file that I find really useful for getting information about what different animals would look like. Sometimes I can just Google, but sometimes it's nice to have a picture right in front of you. I tell you what, let's pick out one for me and one for you too. Or one for each of you. So each of you find an animal that you like and then I'll find one that I like. A lot of times when I go to schools, I have kids sort of sit around and make suggestions about what I could change. So like this ant eater could probably have a really long nose. Whoa, that's long. So if you, you get stuff for an idea, just, you can just come over and take a look. I'm going to add this tongue here. Give him like a Google eye. Sometimes if you're painting just a picture for yourself and you don't, you know, it's not necessarily for anybody else. You can just, you don't have to ask yourself all the mm -hmm. reasons, and you don't have to have rules. You can just kind of make it however you want. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes other people will look at it, and they'll come up with their own reasons for why mm -hmm. you did it. Yeah. And then it's fun to get to hear what they have to say about that. I'm going to just sort of take the tape and put it right on the edge of that line that I drew. And we'll do the same thing for yours, too. Even though you didn't have a line, we can just decide where the edges of that painting are, are going to go. And, and when I'm working on a book, I spend a lot more time making sure that the edges are perfect. Like, yeah, you know, to make sure that I give them enough of an image so that we don't have any white edges showing in the book when they print the book. Yeah. If you take that tape, I'll hold it, and you can tape across the top mm -hmm. wherever you think it should go. That looks good. Yeah, okay, good. And then here's another piece of tape. You can put one on the side. And I'll move this out of your way. It's not quite long enough. I think it'll do Not good. quite long enough? Okay, do it on the bottom. That's good. We can soften it up with some water. This might work well for you. You want to try using that? No, it's okay. Okay. I'm going to use this one. It takes a lot of work, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Imagine doing like really big paintings like murals. I paint a lot Whoa. of I paint a lot of murals too. And uh, I just painted a whole bunch for a hospital. And those paintings I paint on canvas actually. And uh, they're like uh, one of them is like 10 feet high and like 20 feet long. Whoa. So yeah, and it takes me it takes me like a couple of weeks to do one painting. Boy, I loved Lane Smith's books. Yeah. When, I, when I first got out of college, I wanted to paint pictures just like Lane Smith. He I was know. the one that I thought was, uh, he was my favorite illustrator when I he got out really of school. He was really good, actually. Yeah. Remember that book, Glasses? Who Needs Him? I love that one. I just like the, the, the style of painting, all this like really interesting texture that he used. Let's see. All right, so let's add. So that's a nice, uh, a nice brush for making like a smooth kind of texture, you know, almost no texture at all. I probably would ordinarily finish the whole background first, but just for the sake of this, see, because then I get a little mix of another color in there accidentally. I don't remember what color the beak is. Do you girls remember? Orangey, yellowish. Orangish, yellowish. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll get a little orange yellow going in there. Like you can mix colors to make it look like it. Okay. Do you always try to go for a realistic look, or do you ever try to go? Oh, yeah. I wonder what a a yellow flamingo with uh, a black and and pink striped beak would look like. That's a good idea. I've I've usually tried to go sort of realistic and. Um, I think because I feel like more people can understand what it's supposed to be. But I like that idea a lot, and I think maybe if I was painting something just for me and not for an illustration for a book, then I might try oh, yeah, experimenting. Was... You know, because when you're working on a book, 
you have to you want to do something original and make something that people haven't seen before but then there's that fine line you also want to make sure that everybody who's looking at the book understands what the pictures are right away mm -hmm. right and they don't want to have to uh, get an instruction manual or an explanation about how to how to read your paintings yeah okay so we'll just add that in there for now that's he's going to be wearing oh, yeah. a sock on the end of his nose why i don't know Good question. I just had an idea for it. It could be and a brown I decided sock. not to not to ask myself why, but just to paint the picture that I had yeah, in my head. Yeah, because he didn't clean up his room. <laughs> Is that why? <laughs> and I'm gonna try to pop some of that forward, and then just let that dry. You'll see why I do that in a minute. Oh, that's really light. It is. It's really light, but that's okay. I want it's it to really be really light. It's a really nice color have to I have to think ahead I have to think not just what am I doing right now but what's the next thing I'm going to do after I paint this white in there I, I kind of, I'm pretty disorganized when I'm painting. I kind of have a mess in front of me. And uh, I, I actually like having the mess, believe it or not. I feel like, uh, I don't know, I've just always worked this way and it feels comfortable to me. If everything was all out perfectly where I needed it, I think I'd be too nervous about making a mess, you know? So what, since the mess is already here, I'm not worried about making it any worse. So when I got out of college, I knew I wanted to write and illustrate my own books. And uh, I'd written a story. Um, it was about this grandmother and her grandson. And uh, she's really grumpy, and the grandmother. And she, she uh, complained about everything, you know. And she, uh, um, especially food. Uh, and so, so the, the, they'd go out to eat at these restaurants and nothing would be to her liking. And the grandson uh, had this friend who was a cook at a, at a restaurant. Um, and they made this secret plan to trick the grandmother into uh, eating all these disgusting foods like bears and beans and toucan tacos, you know. And, uh, and uh, I brought that book down to New York City, down to a publishing company. First meeting with an art director. And uh, the story was just so wrong on so many different <laughs> levels because also throughout it, the cook is smoking this big cigar and you can never actually see his face because he's like covered in smoke the whole time, you know. And the trick actually backfires um, on the kid and the cook. The grandmother actually really loves all of the, the food, you know. Um, and she eats it all. And she, she doesn't stop there. She eats everything in the restaurant. You know, she eats the tables and chairs and the jukebox and all the silverware. And then she, she actually eats the restaurant itself, you know. And so by the end of the story, um, uh, she, she's gotten to this point uh, where the only thing left is, uh, after all the dust settles, is this tiny cigar that the cook was smoking, this tiny cigar on the ground. So... I get to that point, I'm showing this to the art director, and the art director stops, and she looks at this, and she says, oh, no, <laughs> oh, my goodness, she says, did, did she eat the cook? And I said, uh, well, yeah, you know, she, she ate the cook. And then uh, she says, well, Mr. Mack, and she closes the book, and she says, this publishing company is not prepared to publish a book about cannibalism. <laughs> but smoking was okay. Smoking was fine. She didn't have a problem with a cigar. But